Welcome back, Troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a beautiful 1989 Gibson Les Paul Custom. Now, as far as Les Paul Customs go, I really like the 70s and 80s ones. However, it's in the mid-80s that Gibson went through an ownership change from Norlin into the current era, the Juskowitz era. Now, that sale took place sometime around 1986 or so, but changes really didn't start happening dramatically kind of until like the 90s. They went through a bunch of really weird models in that time where they were trying to find something that would stick, but most things were just too late. So this is a beautiful, very late 80s standard that kind of has some of the modern specs going on. Now you'll notice this one still retains a three-piece maple top as the Norlin era ones usually will, but you can see the headstock is starting to look a little bit more like the 90s ones. The 70s and 80s Les Paul customs really have a unique look to them. Whereas from first glance, if I could not see the serial number on this one, I would probably say it's a very early 90s one, simply because of how the logo looks, as well as how the custom spear looks. But these are maple tops with mahogany bodies and a mahogany neck. But these are fantastic guitars for people who want kind of a more modern guitar that's a little bit older, that still looks terrific. Now something that's unique about these like 88 and 89 Les Paul Customs is they have a fairly rare pickup combination. These are home to the Bill Lawrence The Original pickups. These are a circuit board designed pickup and they actually sound pretty good. I get asked all the time how does it compare to a Tim Shaw or a T-Top and I've never really been good about describing how a pickup sounds. I can tell you that they sound great in the right hands, but I wouldn't necessarily suggest paying crazy money for these pickups or seeking them out to put in your own private build. I like them from a historical standpoint since they were only in Gibsons in 88 and 89. Now yes, some very late 87s will have them as well as some very early 1990s before the 490 series was introduced. But they're just kind of interesting pickups, and it's really easy to tell if a guitar will have that or not, because one of the versions of these pickups has these larger adjustment screws for the height. See how that's much larger than normal? That's how you know there's Bill Lawrence the original pickups in here, without even having to pull them out to look. Now, it is getting increasingly difficult to find really nice 70s and 80s Les Paul Customs in Tobacco Sunburst. It's actually more common to find a 2550th anniversary Les Paul in a tobacco than it is to find a nice Les Paul Custom. And finding one in fairly clean shape is also difficult. So when I saw this one come up, it was like, yes, I love Tobacco Burst Customs, because this is what my first older Gibson was supposed to be. But I ended up getting the 2550 because it was just too hard to find one of these, and it wasn't that much more money for the anniversary one. Now this one was built in very late 1989, 306th day of the year, so it's essentially a 1990 model, and a lot of people like to refer to the 90s as the Goodwood era. So overall, besides being a beautiful Les Paul custom and playing extremely well, it's not really historically significant in any way besides the rare pickups that Gibson only shortly used. They're just beautiful guitars and they make for great players. Now that we've learned a little bit about this guitar, let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. <laughs>
know how this guitar sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. Now from two feet away, this guitar looks immaculate. But then when you get it in the light and you start looking for stuff, that's when you can see it's got some scratches, nicks and dings, some light finish checking marks here on the headstock. I mean, it's not a perfect guitar, but you would be hard pressed to find someone that would be repulsed by its condition. You've got a straight neck, truss rod works just fine. You've got a little bit of stand rash on the side here. You can see that slightly more ambered part there. It's very minor, but it is there and worth knowing about. We have the original nut and original ebony fretboard with frets that just show very minor wear, hardly any at all, with a beautifully slick ebony fretboard. This really is a nice playing and sounding example. You can see the body has some light nicks and dings to it as well as some picking scratches. But I think a really good polish job would clean most of this off. Again, I've got to handle these guitars in order to show them to you guys. I would hate to become the white glove reviewer. But you can see the gold has a little bit of wear to it on the stop bar piece here, as well as on the pickup covers very slightly. Back of the headstock, our serial number is 83069612, made in USA, and this is kind of a 90s characteristic here, where it has a bare natural mahogany neck, and then they give it the dark heel. That's just kind of what they did in the 90s and the early 2000s, so don't be suspicious that this is a heel repair if you ever see a 90s Gibson or early 2000s have that kind of color scheme. Now there are no breaks, cracks, or repairs to this guitar. You've just got some very light wear along the neck. Most notably to see right here is there's like some bubbling to the finish. I think if a ring bangs up against the back of your guitar neck, that's how that happens. But it's not that noticeable, but it is there and worth knowing about. The back of the guitar, you've got some very minor buckle impressions on the back. Nothing too major, but definitely there. And something else to go over here is there was like a sticker or something on this when I got it. It was just blank and silver. I took that off and now you kind of have a sticker residue. You might be able to clean that off or just replace the back plate. The sides of the guitar, kind of a similar shape to the rest of it. It's got some light nicks and dings, but nothing too major. The only change part that I see on this guitar, Schaller strap buttons. So if you've got the Schaller strap locks, you're ready to go on this one. Now we'll look under black light. You can see right here the finish glows a little bit more, and that lines up with how the gold is worn off the tailpiece here. So I'm guessing somebody anchored their hand right here and liked to pick right by the bridge for when they played. So that's kind of the sweat absorbing into the top right there. And again, you can see that along the edges. In regular lighting situations though, you don't see a color difference, but it is there. Back of the guitar, glowing the way I would expect to see. Again, you had some stickers on the back control plate. Sides are also looking good here. Nothing too major to really see. Just some light nicks and dings. Face of the guitar is glowing the way I would want to see, as is the back of the neck here. No breaks, cracks, or repairs. You can see finish is slightly brighter there. And again, that's caused by sweat. It's when it's a darker finish that you need to be worried. And again, you've got some stand rash along the edges. So overall, it definitely passes the black light test with very minimal things to explain. This guitar retains an era correct Gibson USA case. This is like the first iteration of the modern day Gibson USA brown and pink interior case. You can see you've got some scuffs all over it. I would definitely say the case is in worse condition than the guitar. However, the four latches are still present as well as the locking combo. And I believe that one is set at all zeros. And your handle is still here, but you can see it's suffering some wear. I don't think it's actually gonna break on you, it's just the material. Cause in here you have a large rubber cylinder and that's not actually going to break. The inside of the case is kind of a silky pink material. They were trying to capture the original lift-in colors. Now these are good cases, they've got good heel support, double neck rest. 
I'm not in love with the headstock holder there, and they did away with that in later iterations of this case, but they are good cases. Originally, this would have had a pink blanket shroud, but that has been cut off. You can see the tabs, but it definitely does its job. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this 1989 Gibson Les Paul Custom in a gorgeous tobacco sunburst finish, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglies, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. Thank you, Troglies, for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. <laughs>